In this first section, uh, we are going to have a focus section on energy, conversion materials, and devices. Uh, my name is Yi Chui. I'm a faculty member and Department of Material Science at uh, Stanford University. I will be uh, uh, chairing this section. Um, before we start the formal uh, technical presentation, let me uh, give you an overview uh, to set up uh, the background uh, for you. Um, so let's look at the energy conversion process within GSAP. It's always very important to look at you know, what energy processes we are dealing with. If you look at the, how the energy flow, these uh, um, four types of fundamental carriers uh, exist, we think about you know, all the time. Photons, electrons, phonons, ions, atoms, and molecules. Uh, and energy conversion process involving often time, probably nearly all the time, of thinking about how these uh, energy carriers you know, take the energy, convert it into something you're interested in. For example, this is where the solar cells and the LED, you know, uh, we should think about right here, electrons to photons, photons to electrons. And uh, electrons and ions, atoms and molecules, that's uh, the, for the batteries, for the uh, fuel cell, for the catalysis. Um, and electrons and phonons, we think about, you know, heating, cooling, thermoelectrics, and, and, and so on. So underlying this is really, uh, you know, uh, get this process going is the materials and devices. And to have the next generation of breakthrough technology, materials, devices, and their interface are the one, you know, we need to tackle all the time. So in the past, looking at the GSAP's uh, funding uh, uh, project, uh, uh, and uh, materials and devices are essential and for example, the batteries one, that's the one I, I work on uh, very closely, coming up new type of materials such as nanostructure to enable next generation of batteries. And catalysis, you know, uh, finding new materials, understanding their interface to make the catalytic process more efficient, having the low cost uh, catalyst uh, coming in. And a few cells, you know, uh, uh, how do you uh, enable, uh, you know, high power, efficient, uh, for example, oxygen moving and the solid oxide fuel cells right there. And interface control, and this example is a silicon passivated by really thin layer of um, titanium oxide using uh, atomic layer deposition. Uh, only a nanometer or two also can protect the semiconductor underneath, so nearly perfect interfacial control. And, and, and solar cells, how do you do photon management and uh, get the efficient solar cells? And new ideas, how to think about using a, a, you know, photo, a photo enhanced thermionic emission you know, to enhance the uh, electron emission. Um, and a new type of uh, thermoelectric, so a new faculty uh, joining in, Arun is an expert on this. And uh, CO2 capture, you know, nitrogen dope, uh, carbon, for example, with, within the GSAP project. So these are some of the selected examples of uh, how important the materials and devices can play a role in the energy conversion. Um, now in this morning's talk, we have three select examples to look at uh, 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 problems in these areas. The first one is Professor Roger Howe. Um, he will be looking at, uh, you know, really control the interface, having ultra low work function. That facilitate the electron emission. And uh, Professor uh, uh, Robert Brown, uh, really looking at the device uh, and even the system level to rethink about what innovation you can do to have this new idea of solid oxide flow batteries. So it's like solid oxide fuel cells and the flow batteries are, you know, hybrid. And Professor Zhenan Bao um, and, uh, is looking at a new type of uh, polymer for uh, uh, next generation of batteries as well as, you know, CO2 uh, storage uh, capture. Uh, let me give you a quick overview of what might be included in uh, these three people's talk. So, um, uh, Roger, and uh, along with his uh, colleagues in the past several years, has been uh, working on this problem, trying to think about how do I take the electron out of a solid, 
you know, uh, with uh, minimum energy to tune the surface work function. That's the, the, uh, the, that's the, uh, the key thing of the game. And uh, in order to do that, so uh, he teamed up with uh, uh, Jens Noskov and, and doing a DFT calculation. Now to find the new materials, you can call on to the interface to enable ultra low work function, yet at the same time, still uh, maintain a, a, a stable uh, surface right there, allow you to really run the device over, over many, many cycles over the uh, long, uh, long term. And, and coupled together with this will be the experimental testing. So he will be telling you about this. Second example is uh, from uh, uh, Robert Brown. And, and these uh, um, schematic drawing pretty much giving you the idea, you know, and, and to do the marriage of fuel cells and uh, flow batteries. Now, when you do fuel cell, it's not, you don't think about rechargeable fuel cell. You just take the fuels coming in, convert it into electricity, and that's it. And the, uh, for the flow batteries, you can rechargeable back and forth. Unfortunately, those redox couples and the solution still very high cost, not enough energy density. Now, and, uh, uh, and Rob was told you are going to learn about, they are going to come on new type of fuels that's used in the solid oxide fuel cell, but can be done in a way like a flow battery rechargeable uh, of, uh, fuel cells. And uh, Zhenan will be talking about uh, you know, the polymer uh, uh, she's uh, applying into the new type of application. And one example is the cell healing ideas based on her uh, group's research in the past several years, how to do you do the skin cell healing using those ideas she uh, apply into the very challenging problem in, in the battery, for example, in the, in the case of silicon, volume expansion is huge, the breaking is a big problem, how do you use a uh, self-healing polymer? Even they break, but these uh, electrodes self-heal, maintain the um, uh, uh, long cycle life. So um, with this, let's uh, start with the first talk.